<laughs> oh, here we are. So, and I want to talk about hydrogels, collagen hydrogels. Uh, and you will see after my presentation, also as the previous presentation, that the future might go away from this typical second generation uh, implant. Now, what I'm talking about is the cartilage repair system, or short CARES. So it's a German and Austrian company. Uh, and it's, uh, so the hydrogel is made of collagen type 1 from rat tails. Why from rat tails? So it's not bovine, so you don't have a risk uh, for disease transmission. It's in use since 2003, and there have been over 2,000 procedures, primarily uh, in Germany and German-speaking countries, but also in Asia, uh, performed. And this hydrogel you can use at all, at least at the knee, uh, at all defects, and the contal, patella, tibia, and you will see in the following um, uh, slides how you can fabricate this. So of course you have to do a biopsy. You have to do, you do this atroscopically. Then you need uh, the typical collagen digestion of the biopsy, and then you get a chondrocyte suspension. And this is the main difference. This suspension you mix immediately with the hydrogel, and you can pour it in these six well dishes. And a final concentration of the gel of three milligram per milliliter. You culture it for 12 days, and the gel is eight millimeters thick. Why eight, eight millimeters? Now, normally the cartilage we're talking about is four to five, but this is a hydrogel. And by compressing the gel, it can lose up to 70% of water and adapt exactly to the adjacent cartilage. Now, the two main advantages of this technology uh, compared to the standard um, technologies that you have not a cultivation in a monolayer, and then you don't, you don't have this uh, de-differentiation as we have shown previously in 2004. So here you see that the cells immediately, they stay in their round uh, chondrocyte uh, shape. So this is the procedure. Uh, you see here a typical defect. Uh, we have a, a special a punch to get the um, damaged cartilage out. Very important is that they have a sharp uh, border to the uh, healthy cartilage because cells might migrate from this cartilage also into the hydrogel. Then we have another punch with this one, which is one millimeter wider and then you have here this hydrogel on this special, special spoon and here you see that the hydrogel is very proud but you come with the back of your forceps and you make a massage and then you really can bring it uh, here in the defect. And here you see there are actually two defects. And it fits very nicely uh, to this uh, cartilage. You might use or might not use uh, fiber and glue. Uh, we don't use it. Um, uh, we did it in the first procedures, but actually you don't need it. Now, uh, with this type of uh, gel, you can treat all kinds of defects. You see a condyle, trochlea, um, and the tibia. Here, cysts on the tibia. But also very severe defects, uh, huge osteochondral defects, uh, patella. Uh, this is my favorite picture here, a failed uh, mosaic blasty. And, you know, it's as a second line treatment for the ACI, it's very easy to fill these three defects uh, with a kind of, a, of this hydrogel. Now, here's one case a Russian immigrant to Germany. 31 years, he never had treatment. We see this very rarely, this osteochondritis dissecans on the medial condyle, both sides. Huge guy, two meters tall, and here you see the defect, uh, which is big defect, and uh, you, get, you have to deprive this. And what we use, and what we do in, instead of most of the, the other um, um, surgeons, we don't uh, put uh, bone plugs into the defect, we reconstruct this by impaction bone grafting, um, seal it with fiber and glue and then put the implant on top. You see that here, this is, uh, looks red because the, the bone is underneath it, but again, uh, there might be mesenchymal stem cells uh, going into this uh, hydrogel. And you see here in these both uh, pictures that you have very nice uh, reconstructed uh, the articular surface, even in this big defect. Now this is a, uh, an MRI I want to show you because uh, most of the people after this have an inflammation in the joint. There is some fluid, you see this here, effusion in the joint after three months, which normally goes away after six months. And what you also can see here very nicely is the difference here between the hydrogel and the fluid. I mean, this is also mostly fluid. Um, you can actually in the MRI 
look very nicely and differentiate between the effusion and the hydrogel. So this is in histology, a courtesy from Dr. Schneider from the University of Aachen. You see after one year, um, uh, some fibro, fibro cartilage. This is the process. We all know that you cannot mimic mother nature uh, as long as the patient is patient free, uh, pain free. And here you see an arthroscopic uh, picture of this patient before. Now we did a multi-center study with, which we just published and we included 160 patients, mean follow-up 30.7 months. These are the typical ICS inclusion and exclusion criteria. We looked at a couple of things. I want to make it a little shorter today. I have shown this data already in the last meeting and I just want to focus on the IKDC score. Uh, here are the people um, which have been enrolled and very important also, as in the previous uh, talk, uh, almost 82% of these people had, have had uh, previous surgery um, before the ACI, this 57% and ACL and meniscus or osteotomy 25. So most people approaching us are not uh, first surgery, but they're mostly like a second uh, surgery after microfracturing. This is very important because of the outcome of the study. Now, what's the next one? Here, here we go. So the IKDC score, we saw that also uh, previously for this uh, mostly degenerative uh, cartilage defect is going up from 42 to 75. We looked every year actually, and here you see this typical plateau after 12 months. So this is three, six, 12 months, and one year follow up up to five years. And you see here up to five years it stays on this uh, plateau is not going down, and we are very interested about the next seven and eight and 10 year data. So very interesting is also um, uh, the different diagnosis. Um, people who had an osteochondritis dissecans, they started out with the same AKDC, AKDC score, ICS score, but they ended up uh, at uh, scores about 80 and the others only 60, 67. So this was the only significant difference we found. Uh, here you see the numbers of the patients. All the other points, let's say the f bigger or smaller than four square centimeters or the location, medial lateral condyle or trochlea turned out not to be a significant. The overall satisfaction the doctor said, okay, 88% uh, of the patients do very good. We have very good uh, results. And 80% uh, of the patient itself say, said, okay, this is a very good, uh, a, a very good, a good clinical result. So in summary, uh, these results are comparable with the other matrix-based technologies using membranes or sponges we have on the market. <laughs> now, I want, to have, I want to give a little perspectives now. Now we have this gel and we heard a lot of growth factors, stem cells, and also cell-free one-step procedures. So what could you do with this gel? We had about bone marrow concentrates. Uh, actually for this transplant difficult because it's, uh, it's a gel. Uh, you might to do this intraoperatively. The second one is you, you can use cultured MSCs. The third one is um, you, we did some experiments where we were trying to stabilize, stabilize the matrix more, compress it more to make it more harder. And the fourth one is uh, to come up with a cell-free, stabilized, off-the-shelf product. And the first one, um, bone marrow concentrate. Uh, we know that this in the clinical application, I know data from the United States for non-unions, for trauma, femoral head necrosis, spinal fusion, also for critical limb ischema. But the problem is also here there's a lack of randomized uh, clinical trials. And we have seen some data for articular cartilage repair. And the process is very easy. You can do that. I don't want to go through the details. Here's one of these machines. You can do it in the OR within 14 or 20, min 20 minutes. And you end up with a concentrate of these bone marrow cells, which are not pure mesenchymal stem cells, which are all nucleated cells, also white blood cells. Um, you can concentrate them up to four milliliters. And you have seen uh, these uh, animal studies from Lisa. 
And she have, has found um, that compared to the microfraction, there are better results if she uses uh, in the horse uh, this bone marrow concentrates. And there's also a clinical trial, uh, which we have seen also previously, a series of 20 patients, and they also claim that we have an improved AKDC score in these patients. So how is the situation, at least in Germany, for this product? And what we did is, one of our study centers, he sent um, a trial protocol to the local ethics committee. And in Germany, there's the federal regulatory agencies, the Paul Ehrlich Institute. And now the local ethics committee sent it to the Paul Ehrlich Institute. And the Paul Ehrlich Institute in Germany said, oh, this is not for bone and cartilage repair. This is not something as compared to bone marrow transplantation if you use CD35 positive cells. So we got a letter back which claimed it's not homologous use, there's no physiological function, and it should be claimed as an advanced therapy medicinal product, an ATMP, which means that in Germany, this is not for Switzerland, not for Italy, and not for Austria, but in Germany, we have to go the whole the procedure, making an animal preclinical data, and then show up in the Paul Ehrlich Institute um, with a clinical phase one trial for safety. So here you see what he said in this last sentence, the regulatory uh, might be very difficult. So, but Germany, they always are very trying to set very high standards. In this case, I think it's actually very stupid. Now, second thing, should we replace them with GMP, expanded mesenchymal stem cell from the bone marrow? They're easy to harvest, you get much higher cell numbers, you have no donor site mobility, that would be the scenario. Very easy, just replace the chondrocytes by stem cells, put them in the hydrogel, and put them in the patient. So we have done some initial experiments uh, where we put uh, the cells in these hydrogels. We made three groups, uh, just uh, serum, one with BMP, one with TGF beta 1, and we waited for three weeks. And what we found um, in the histology was, no, it's not going further. Oh, here we go. Now, we found in the histology that actually in the control group, we had some spontaneous chondrogenic differentiation. Um, TGF beta and BMP2, yeah, BMP2 and TGF beta, we ended up with chondrocyte like cells in that hydrogel. But here you see we have a lot of shrinking because of this uh, growth factor where the cells they crap the matrix. We also have this collagen uh, type 2 immunohistochemistry positive and the collagen type 10 also positive in this hydrogels. We did not see this um, in the control group, which we just treated with, uh, with serum. And we found also some um, expression of collagen type 2 in the BMP and TGF beta treated group, uh, which we did not found, find in the control group. So then we did an animal experiment on the mini pig. On the right, si right side, we did an AST, autologous stem cell transplantation. On the other side, we did an ACT, autologous chondrocyte transplantation from the same animal in the same animal. So you see here the, the stem cell collagen gel and the chondrocyte collagen gel. This is a microscopic and a, a histological uh, view. And here you see this very nice bonding uh, to the intact articular cartilage. This is the repair tissue. Uh, this is one for mesenchymal stem cells, and this is one for the um, chondrocytes. You look at the collagen type 2 staining, and here you see again this nice bonding of the gel to the adjacent cartilage. So with these data, we went to the company. So the company said, you know, Dr. Nutt, this is difficult, you know. We have to go to the Paul Ehrlich Institute, and we are not sure whether the cells are genetic stable and all these things. So for a small company, it's very difficult uh, to change um, a process they have established to, this, to the stem cells. That's why, why we went never to this product, uh, and we did never replace uh, the chondrocytes by stem cells. Now the other next option I told you about to, to compress the gel make it more stable, because a couple of the surgeons, they claimed that it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, not hard enough. 
So they developed a machine where they compressed it, and you see here with cells. So the chondrocytes were uh, in that hydrogel, and they, they survived, and they uh, produced uh, collagen type 2. And from that result, uh, the company said, okay, we might go from to an off-the-shelf product. And what is now on the market is the off-the-shelf product, which is compressed, but without cells. And you see here a recent animal study in the mini pig, untreated defect in the trochlea, cell-free hydrogel, and a cell seeded with chondrocytes. And you see here this nice repair tissue. There are some differences between the cell-free and the cell-loaded, uh, especially in the uh, collagen type 2 expression. But you get also a, a nice repair tissue. So that's why we are now on the market since uh, the beginning of this year with this CARES one-step uh, product, which is off the shelf. It comes in three different diameters, 11 millimeters, 22 millimeters, and 34 millimeters. And we just started a um, prospective multicenter study with this gel, which can be exactly um, identically applied as the um, cell laden a transplant, and this study actually is limited, uh, the previous, the first study is uh, limited to, to defect sizes up to four square, square centimeters. And we also started another study, monocentric, where we're trying to treat osteochondritis dissecans of the female head, which is very rare, cystic formation, as you can see here, or AVN stage three after surgical dislocation, and also for this, uh, these young patients, it might be, uh, here, after micro-fracturing or drilling, it might be an option. Um, if you do a trimming of the neck anyway or something on the joint, uh, trying to get repaired uh, these defects. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ulrich. Now, Dr. Steve Avelov.